Right, now for Ackle. Now, I know it's not a town as such. It's a large and beautiful island on the west coast of Ireland. But we thought it was far too interesting a place to ignore. Can anyone tell me what Ackle is? Ackle is an island. Uh, um, an island is a, a piece of land um, surrounded by water. Mm -hmm. And is it actually joined to the land? Yes, by a bridge. Um, Michael Davitt um, helped uh, to build a bridge. When there wasn't a bridge, how did people get to the island? In the front here. There was a wooden bridge before that. But before the wooden bridge, uh, they go back in boats. Yeah. Across the water. That must have been quite dangerous, was it? Yes. Does anybody know how it got its name? <coughs> uh, long, long ago, um, the island was full of um, eagles. They lived on the cliffs and the mountains. There are two interpretations of how Atle got its name. Uh, one comes from the Latin word aquila, which means eagle. Uh, once upon a time, there were m many eagles on Achill Island. The last one was shot 25 years ago off Achill Head by an English tourist. Um, he was allowed to take the last golden eagle to England and get it stuffed to make money on its sale. During the eagle of Achill Free Culture Uruan, Marshin Achillo, Ahru were on Fuckal Achillo, Achill, Anamonilon, Majula Kulo Agus Achillo, Ta. Uh, a long crew in Perthi, Gro Akal Fui Kulsha, Marshin, Nibrunya Gusi, Atala Fall, in Snaperti. What about where people went to work? I mean, people didn't stay on the island a lot. They had to go away. Okay. Um, a lot of them went to England and Scotland, but some of them went to um, big places like Dublin, Cork, or Limerick. Yeah. And how did they get there? Did they go by boat? Sometimes by boat or by mm. train. Was there anybody ever drowned? Yes, and the clue by drowning, there were um, 32 drowned. I'm walking along the platform of the old railway line to Echo. About 200 years ago, it was prophesied by a man called Carabine that the first and last trains to Echo would carry coffins. The railroad to Echo had been built, but in 1894, it had to be opened officially to bring the bodies of the drowned people into Echo. Um, there were 26 women and 6 men drowned. It was a great tragedy. In 1937, the railroad to Echo had been closed, but it had to be opened again to bring the bodies of 10 young men who were burned in Kirkintilla, where they had been working on a potato farm. This fulfilled the prophecy that the first and last trains to Echo would carry coffins. Ta Ryark Alling are an Araga, a Wulla and Hushlan show, a Takongarach Don Relic. Ho Grang in Iwalia, Harthar and Kuiguish Jag. Bawoba Hasula Ture no la Kushlan. Nirakoni a Granyan show, a Hushlan Ella lay, a Gariga Howley. Who was Granny Wayne? Uh, she was an Irish sea pirate. And uh, she she was born in Clear Island, and she she has her headquarters there. She's a castle up uh, uh, up uh, on the island, and uh, she used it for a lookout for mm. merchants, English merchants. Why? What did she do to them? Uh, she she asked them for money. Really? Were any of you yeah, born outside Ireland? Oh my goodness! <laughs> Where were you born? England. Whereabouts? In London, in Where? Hammersmith. Hammersmith. And when did you come? Uh, when I was about one. Really? So you don't really remember London, do you? No. What about you? Uh, Bolton in England. Bolton? You have a bit of a Bolton accent. So yeah. you mustn't be long here. About uh, four years. Four years. Do you like it? Yeah. Is there much difference between the summer and the winter in Acca? Now, no, not just talking about the weather, but in the actual life that goes on around here. Helen? In the summer, like at night, it's the more, there's more to do for young people. Like there's amusement centres open that's not during the winter. There's loads of things to do, dances, discos. But do you not have dances and discos on in the yeah. winter as well? Well, it's a school rule. We're not allowed out only once a month. How do you mean you're not allowed out only once a month? Well, we can't month. go to discos and dances. Well, dances anyways, maybe a youth club disco. Mm -hmm. but. Only once a month we have a tech dance. You mm. can go to that. Personally, I think it's a bad school rule, Letch. 
not being allowed out at the weekends. When you say you're not allowed out at the weekends, surely it's up to you what you do in your spare time. Exactly, yeah, but um, if you're caught out, like, it could mean expulsion from school, you know? So um, it's kind of dangerous, like, if you're caught out. <laughs> so in the winter, what is there to do? Well, um, I play football myself, you know, like, during the winter. There's competitions that have run off, you know, mm. David Sheik, Scanning Cups. Brian, Brian! Come on, tell me what! Unman, man, tell me! Unman yourself! Well done! <laughs> Come on, Giorgio! Come on, Giorgio! Come on! Come on, Giorgio! Come on, Giorgio! Mary, you're involved in orienteering. Yes. How did you get started in orienteering of all um, sports? Well, we started in geography and we were map reading and then we decided to go out um, looking um orienteering. Now, what exactly is orienteering? It's going across country with the help of a map and a compass. So you have to become pretty good at reading a map? Yes. Do you have to be fit, Karma? No, not really. It's good exercise, though. The object of the game, presumably, is to... Find the marker. As fast as you can? Yeah. Is the first person home the winner? Well, yeah, and how long it takes them. Do you enjoy orienteering? Yeah, I enjoy it. You know, it's great fun. I'd say Ackle is an ideal place, really, for Yeah, because it's rich to you and bumpy. You know, this hedges. It's fairly wild. Yeah. What about the rock climbing? Deirdre, are you involved in rock climbing? No. No, you're, you are Pauline. Yeah, yeah. Well, I've only done it about three times, but hmm. I intend to keep it up. It's quite an unusual sport, too. I, mean, I, I would say that you're probably unique in the country for having rock climbing as one of your school pastimes. Yeah, well, um, there's an outdoor pursuit centre attached to our school. I think it's the only one of its kind in the country. So that's how I got interested in it. And um, um, teenagers come at weekends, you know, to do those activities in Aka. Patrick, you're involved in rock climbing too. Yes, yes. Is it a dangerous sport? Not really, if you're careful. And you have the right equipment. There's a lot of equipment involved. You see climbers on rocks with ropes hanging out of them everywhere. But yeah, but they're professionals and they're uh, going up the uh, big, that's cliffs. Yeah. Around here, we, it's uh, for beginners mainly. Like where we were climbing there, that was only for beginners. Arthur, you're involved in surfing. That's another unusual sport to be involved in. Yeah, it is, yeah, because it's, uh, you get so big waves and it's on the Atlantic and you get the. Yeah, it's fairly rough, like, you get mm. big waves, like, big surf. It seems to me to be a very exciting sport, is it? Oh, it is. It's, it's very exciting. Especially if you can get on top of a wave, like, you know, that's if you can get on top of one, like... Is it very difficult? Oh, it's difficult when you're starting off at first. It's difficult. The one disadvantage, I'd say, ACA people have is that the water's pretty cold around here. No, oh, it is, yeah, but you have wetsuits on, though. Are the wetsuits supplied by the school? Yeah, supplied by the school, and so the surfboards. 